Hey everybody, welcome back. Dr. Dan here. This week I'm going to talk about chapter 2 of our book for History 1070. And uh, this week the module, the chapter, uh, is all about imperialism. So I'll talk about imperialism a little bit. What does imperialism mean? It basically means a big country uh, taking over and exploiting a smaller country. Okay, And it's happened a zillion times. Um, so a couple of examples of imperialism are certainly, um, if, we, if we look to England, okay, and if we looked at how England colonized India and colonized uh, much of Africa, many European nations did, um, so we, that's, that's a, a classic case of imperialism. Uh, another case of imperialism closer to home, as far as U.S. is concerned, um, uh, the annexation of Hawaii. Okay, in the late 1800s. Uh, Hawaii was a separate country, independent country with a king and queen, and the U.S. took it over and annexed it, and uh, eventually it became a state. But that's, that's a, a good example of imperialism, where a country like the U.S. comes and takes over a smaller country like uh, Hawaii. Okay, so, but, but in the context of, of this chapter, because we're in this late 1800s, we're just creeping up on the 1900s, uh, imperialism is sort of a big thing, but it's, it's a different kind of imperialism than what came before it. Let me explain. Um, early imperialism, outside of our class, not what we're talking about, was, was really about spreading Christianity. Uh, so let's look to America, the Americas. Uh, imperialism back then by Spain, okay, or by England, in the case of England's colonization of, of the New World, that was really, a lot of that was about spreading Christianity and possessing um, lands to become more politically powerful. In other words, when England uh, takes over you know, North America, um, in the you know fort, fort 1500s, 1600s, you know one of the reasons they do that is to gain power over Spain, so Spain won't take over North America. That's an example of like early imperialism. That's not what we're talking about in this chapter. This chapter, the author refers to uh, the new imperialism, and the new imperialism is really all about getting raw materials. All right, the new inter materialism is all about uh, gaining uh, raw materials to. Uh, fuel the Industrial Revolution. So we talked in the last chapter about the Industrial Revolution happens when wage labor, when factories are, are um, uh, grow and developed and processes and inventions are developed. So uh, factories grow, they need wage workers, and that's the Industrial Revolution, that shift from uh, agricultural, uh, manuf agricultural production, agricultural work, to industrial production and industrial wage work. So when that happens in the late 18, well, actually when it happens in the 1700s and when it, it continues to happen in the 1800s uh, and into the 1900s, the new imperialism um, is, is just a descriptive term for the industrial powerhouse countries going out and taking over other countries who have raw materials they can use. Okay, so um, you'll read about like the Belgian Congo in Africa. So Belgium um, goes into Africa and, and colonizes areas uh, in the Congo uh, to get uh, you know uh, rubber, raw materials for rubber and that sort of thing. So um, that's what new imperial is, and it's important to differentiate it. So. Old imperialism is really more about gaining the land and maybe converting people to a certain religion, but the new imperialism is really all about um, industrial raw materials and money and sometimes labor as well. So keep that in mind. And so, you know, when you read chapter two, you know, it's sort of my summary of the chapter is that imperialism is always the result of one group of people feeling superior over others. So, I mean, you know, when England goes to India, you know, originally, or when India, uh, or when England, you know, goes to Asia and to China, when the, when the Americans go to Hawaii, uh, they certainly look down on the Hawaiians uh, or the Asians uh, or certainly the Africans or anyone who looks different than them. So a component of imperialism not only is, hey, we're gonna take over your raw materials, uh, but it's also, hey, we're smarter than you. We're better than you. Our system's better than yours. Another form of imperialism is if 
A great example is in India. You know, England comes in, colonizes India, and establishes an English uh, school type, you know, system. It starts to teach English, sets up English style courts. So another part of imperialism is when the country taking over the smaller country imposes their culture or their uh, society on the other country, sort of a deculturalization de effect. So anyway, this chapter focuses on India, Southeast Asia, and Africa uh, in the late 1800s. You're gonna read about a guy, Cecil Rhodes. Um, he was really a, 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 a kind of a poster child for racism in England as it relates to colonization and imperialism. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, um, it's interesting to read the, the other part of the imperialism is not only, hey, we want the raw materials from the smaller country, but the other part of it is, hey, we want to sell back manufactured goods to that country. So imperialism has all these different little tentacles that, that uh, go through it. Uh, but certainly you can't have a conversation about imperialism or colonization without talking about racism because that really uh, fuels all of this stuff. I mean, you talk about, if, if you wanted to teach a diversity, equity, and inclusion class, and you wanted to have someone tell you a story about everything not to do, if you want to build a diverse, equitable, and inclusive society, well, certainly they should read chapter two, because this is all, you know, privileged whites uh, taking over other cultures that they deem to be crude or less than they are, and also steal their raw materials uh, at the same time and hope to sell them some goods later. So again, I, I think you guys know where we're going here. And I, it's interesting because I sometimes think of history as a, as a primer of what not to do if you want to build a world where people get along. And certainly this chapter tells you that the greed that uh, people had in, in this case to um, grow wealth and gain raw materials and sell more stuff uh, the greed and power is what uh, drives other humans to uh, hurt or demean um, you know, other people that they deem crude. And I don't have to tell you about that. So that's the race part. Uh, religion works into it to some extent. I mean, you know, the Westerners always want to spread Christianity. So that's a given. It's really not like the Crusades where it's, you know, the Christians fighting the Muslims or anything like that. But certainly Christianity is part of this imperialism, but it's... It's not as much as it is in the, uh, you know, in the earlier times, in the 1700s. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff about African culture in here. There's also stuff about malaria. So, you know, with modern transportation and people getting into new areas, there's also a new rise of, of diseases. Uh, so malaria is talked about and, and quinine and, and uh, uh, how to cure malaria. And uh, indirect and direct rule is talked about. That is pretty straightforward. Uh, direct rule is where a country comes in and like puts their own guys in charge. So uh, think about, oh, uh, I don't have my Ukrainian hat on right now, but think about the Ukraine. So one of the things going on in Ukraine right now is that the Russians, when the Russians come and take a city, they install their government. You know, they install like their mayor in the city or whatever. Uh, that's direct rule. So when someone takes over another country and they install their own leaders there physically in the country, that's direct rule. And indirect rule is where they rule the country from afar uh, with stooges, all right, local people to do stuff for them. Um, so uh, there's that. There's a blurb about women in colonial Africa. And, and really all the problems with racism and and. Uh, gender discrimination, or a lot of it, really comes out of our culture, Western culture. Um, you know, the early um, starting with the English coming over to North America. So, really, the uh, when you think about women being degraded or like in lesser social status, that's not always the case. There's a little bit about that, um, and then uh, read page 49 about the Maxim gun. All right, so you know it's. It's one of those things, but technologies are often invented to kill people um, and to be machines of war. So you'll read about the Maxim gum, gun, uh, which is an American invention really only made to kill people. So there's that. Um, let's talk about the essay real quick this week. I hate to call it an essay because it's really not. Um, you know, I'm, I'm reading it here because everyone always asks me the, the length. 
All right, so the assignment, the essay assignment, the writing assignment, um, ask you to provide a logical explanation with appropriate detail of one primary motivation for new imperialism and connect that ex explanation to one example of colonialism in our textbook. That's real easy. <laughs> okay, that's, that's super easy. So all you need to do there is say, hey, um, and I'm not going to write it, I'm not going to talk about it in a sentence form, but you need to say, you know, one motivation for England going to India was to get, you know, fill in the blank to get like a raw material, have it make sense, and kind of finish it off, maybe write a couple of sentences and connect it together. Um, and I want you to cite it. And what I mean by that is, and there's directions in Blackboard, but I just need an in-text citation uh, with the, and it should come from our textbook, okay? I mean, it, I guess it doesn't have to, but it should come from our textbook. So the in-text citation, and you'll see it on Blackboard, it should just be the author's name and then the page number. Um, so if you're gonna use chat GTP to write something like this, which I think would be kind of silly because it's only gonna be a sentence or two long, um, you really wouldn't be able to do it because you'd have to get a citation from our book with a page number. So whatever, but uh, so write it, it's super easy. And there's a rubric there um, in the assignment. So the answering the question correctly um, is imperialism is it makes up the bulk of the scoring, 100 points of this assignment. And then articulation of response, that means how well you say it or write it. All right, so if you articulate it well, if I can read it and understand it, then you'll get uh, perfect on that. That's 50 points of the assignment. And then source acknowledgement. So that means uh, have in-text citations. Usually students get 50 points off because they forget the silly in-text citations. But I need those just to know where you got your information. So if I haven't heard of this before, I can go back and look for it. That's the only reason. Plus, it's always good to source your uh, info so people know that you know what you're talking about. So that was a lot, and I didn't cover everything in the chapter, so go ahead and read it. Enjoy the essay, and I'll see you again next week. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye-bye.